Hey, atheists. Uh, today I found out that if you care about the environment, you're a dirty pagan. Godless Cranium made an interesting post recently that caught my attention, so I blame him for this. Uh, there's a few interesting quotes from it, so I decided to go down this journey and share it with you guys. There, this, this article starts out by talking about a historian from Princeton in the 60s who argued that Christianity was responsible for ecological disaster and climate change, and how the left seems to just like adopt this on faith. For me, um, I regularly see Christians refer to the earth as disposable because of end times beliefs, but that's not what this person was referencing. The article, if I take as quoting it accurately, uh, seems to suggest that since we don't see nature as personified, we exploit it because we don't care about how it feels. My alarm bells went off on the suspicion that the person writing this article, as well as the person he's quoting, just don't have a clue about traditions and pagan practices, at least not historically. And in fairness, you know, a, a lot has happened since the 60s in paganism. Uh, a lot of scholastic historical research has come out since then that has allowed for the start of the Reconstructionist movement, of which I'm a part. But this guy doesn't know that, and that's fine. People usually don't. But <laughs> it's the next thing that caught my attention, though. He writes, If nothing else, the last few days should be enough to prove that Western civilization, a product of more than 1,500 years of Judeo-Christian values, is facing its most significant and sustained challenge in centuries from tribalistic paganism, a force that seeks not only to turn back time, but to essentially destroy the entire current edifice. <laughs> paganism. It's like these guys forget that, like, the height of Rome, the foundation of what many might consider to be Western civilization, was pagan as fuck. And we can make a whole series of videos on, like, what contributions to our culture were Christian, what were pagan, what was neither, and what was actually good for humanity. History is vast and subtle, but we'll leave that lie for now. However, I'll comment quickly that our legal system is a combination of Anglo-Saxon and Roman tradition both pagan, and Christianity has a long history of taking pagan traditions, slapping a cross on it, and calling it its own creation. And this is really no different. But but we move on really quickly to the next sentence here, which is super interesting. As secular liberalism destroyed the fundamental ties that bind society, faith, flag, and family, the human instincts for faith to believe, worship, submit, and fear didn't just go away, but manifested in various other pre-civilized tribal ways. <laughs> okay, first thing to point out, polytheism isn't secular, and, and pre-civilized tribal ways weren't secular, and pre-Christians were still civilized and not secular. So I've pointed out a couple of times that I'm not a secularist, I'm a pluralist, and I don't think that religion should be completely separate from society. I just think that we should be broadly accepting of various traditional practices. But Christians hate that for whatever reason. Christians seem to want, like, religion to be involved in public life, but it has to be their religion. They can't, like, share the space or they freak out. They have to be exclusive to function. It's very strange. Second thing to point out, the fundamental ties that bind society, faith, flag, and family. Of course, the Federalist fundamentally believes that society is bound by F-words, which is funny to me. But not to say that, like, faith, flag, or family are necessarily bad things. Um, it's obvious that by these things, they often mean Christianity, blind patriotism, and heterosexual nuclear family. But otherwise, like, the values of faith, flag, and family would apply to ancient Rome, which was a bunch of dirty pagans. My religion, my country, and my family are hugely important to me, personally. Uh, but I'm still an environmentalist and a pagan. Uh, the last thing that I'll note is this guy's like idea for human instincts of faith. They're, <laughs> they're interesting. Uh, to believe, worship, submit, and fear. Christians are so fucking weird. Like, I don't, I don't know why they, they say shit like this. Like, maybe there's a human instinct to believe. But the way that Christians worship is just so completely unintuitive, and it, it doesn't contain reciprocity with their God. Like, they don't make offerings. They just pray and bombard their God with a series of requests or tell him how great he is. And then, like, they, their value on submission and fear is not only absurd, but it doesn't work with how they handle prayer. It's a fucking mess. The more they, they say this kind of stuff, the more it just sounds like a Jotun to me. Like, be afraid, be exclusive to me, obey without question. These are things that, like, 
Christians think are values for whatever reason. And maybe that's why they're historically so susceptible to fucking fascism. I don't know. Anyway, he talks about a, a liberal seminary that encourages students to skip class and pray to confess their sins in front of potted plants. Uh, color me interested and amused. I had to follow the link hole on this one. He links to a Fox News article complaining about a seminary that is multi-traditional called Union Seminary, which I looked up. They have several forms of faiths working together, including Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, and various kinds of Christians. Each of the Christians they count as a separate faith tradition. Uh, and listed among all of these like very specific types of Christians is the word pagan. Um, this comparative oversimplification is it seems to be applied to every non-Christian faith on the list, such as par for the course for these kinds of things. And But as a pagan, I have no idea what pagan means in this context, but but confessing to potted plants sounds like some fluffy bunny shit to me. And, and pagans working closely with Christians are always like a little self-effacing. And, and reading through the org site, it seems to give heavy preferential attitudes towards Christianity with everyone else just kind of giving input. But whatever, you know, there's a whole discussion to be had on pagans erasing themselves by participating in these kinds of things and how individuals that do are usually not even polytheists. But that's a whole nother bag of cats, each with their own little can of worms. So we're not doing that right now. But the inclusion of this kind of thing in the article shows that it's not even pagans they're referencing. In this case, it's just weird Christians possibly being influenced by fluffy bunnies. And for those that don't know what fluffy bunnies are, that's how polytheists lovingly refer to pagans that are really really wooey um they're usually like new agey atheists or pantheists like like your pagans that want to use crystals to cure cancer or something like and then they tell you not to go to the doctor because the crystals will take care of it this oddly coincides with the type of pagans who are like atheists that view the gods as archetypes as a way to explore themselves there's some weird shit out there before we move on, Union Seminary posted like this 10 tweet response to the criticism they received uh, for the ritual. I, I've included a link down below. It didn't really appeal to me. It's it's full of monotheist rhetoric with some interesting questions sprinkled in. It seems like it's it's just Christian theology of original sin and salvation narrative aimed towards plants, which is hardly pagan in my eyes. It's more of just like Christians being more weird than usual. He follows that up talking about a funeral held for a glacier which he seems oddly focused on the idea that it was a funeral and less about the elimination of a glacier. Anyway, I, I found a picture of the event. I'll put it up here. Uh, it's some hikers mourning the loss of a glacier. They're wearing hiking gear. Does this seem weird or explicitly pagan? Um, there doesn't seem to be a ritual taking place. What's the issue here? Here's the tweet about the event. Uh, appears it was to get more coverage on the issue. It was successful at that. Is this pagan? This guy's like flipping out over people pointing out that a glacier is disappearing. Would it was there a better would it be better if there was like a pastor? What's what's the right way to point this out to this guy? Whatever. So so the next thing he brings up is a group called Extinction Rebellion, which he calls an apocalyptic cult founded by a woman who took psychedelic drugs and prayed for social change. And then he proceeds to shame twerking as a fertility dance to Gaia, which which I think just shows that this person has like a fundamental deficiency of fun. Like, I, I don't know what it is about twerking that offends these guys. Like, twerking is hot. Get over it, you fucking snowflakes. But I got interested in this woman who founded the group. Like, is this some apocalyptic religious cult? Is It's not like those don't exist. Um, the founder's name is Gail Bradbrook. She's a PhD in molecular biophysics, and I decided to see if I could find her talking about religion and her organization. So I did. I'm not here speaking for Extinction Rebellion. We have no position on psychedelic medicines and the use of ceremony and spirituality and so on. So I'm very much speaking uh, from my own uh, personal experience. Oh, oh well. Uh, further research on the group shows that they are indeed apocalyptic. They fervently believe that we are in the sixth great extinction event, and they hold that part of the solution to this is civil disobedience, which they call open rebellion. And they're serious about it, and from a political perspective, they seem pretty straightforward, despite being, like, definitely radical. But is she pagan? Like, well, she seems to have some theistic, even polytheistic leanings. I'd call her pagan. I don't know if she calls herself one. But here she is on prayer, and you can make the judgment for yourself. Um... And I, I, I think also, and I'll tell a story related to this, asking for guidance. For if you, you know, I take the possibility that teleology, that an in inherent purpose exists in the universe and we could be in some dialogue for it. The scientist in me goes like, really? When I'm sat praying uh, sometimes and yet take the medicines and um, 
witness how many prayers have been answered. Prayers, if they're made in service to life, you know, not for me. If they're in service, I witness synchronicities and the arriving of people at the right time in Extinction Rebellion. It's quite a phenomena, actually. And uh, so whether it's working or not, that's what I'm going to carry on doing. But the thing that I found, like, interesting was that whatever pagan aspect that there is about her isn't the part of her that's apocalyptic. It, she seems to use spirituality as a mode for interpreting her life, but the apocalyptic part of her is the scientist. We are in the sixth mass extinction event. There have been five major extinction in the past in humanity. Um, this is the first one for humanity. The Permian-Triassic extinction was caused by runaway climate change. 97% of our life was wiped out, and we are emitting carbon and heating the planet at a greater rate than the Permian-Triassic extinction. The way we say it in Extinction Rebellion, and perhaps this is the working class last from Yorkshire, I, I live in Gloucestershire, is we're fucked. We really have to get... <laughs> I've put links down below for uh, to both of these speeches and a video where another member talks about activism and the morality around accepting money. The group is definitely radical, and uh, the founder is pagan, but she separates that paganism from Extinction Rebellion, or at least she claims to. Uh, her activism strategies may be inspired by spirituality through psychedelics, but the inspiration for her apocalyptic position seems to be grounded in rational thought. If her reasoning for her apocalyptic rhetoric was based in, like, psychedelic visions and not data points, I'd have a go at her. But that's not what's going on. No! It's just science. It has nothing to do with any god or... Nothing to do with god? No, that's not what I meant. I think we just have a complex person here. Uh, like, agree with her or not, she's not the wackadoo that the article is trying to make her out to be. Extremist, maybe. But uh, she'd probably agree that she's an extremist. Like, she believes herself to be justified as one. Her personal and emotional justifications have spiritual grounding. Her radical activism has scientific grounding. So it isn't the spiritual grounding that the author actually has an issue with. It's the scientific grounding. In other words, it's not her paganism that this guy has a problem with. It's her position as a scientist. In inverted commas, you've, you've tried the petitions and the letter writing and no one's heard you. Is that your argument? Um, it's not only that. The emissions are increasing. And the UK government claims to be a leader, but actually emissions are decreasing in such a tiny way in the UK. We are not tackling this crisis. I do want people to understand the, 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 the situation that we're in. This is mm. absolutely unprecedented. So you're saying it's so a naked attempt to grab publicity. Uh, that, that, uh, you're being totally honest about that. You're doing it purely... That's part of the process, Richard. Yes. Yeah? So you get the publicity, and we're not here to get people to like us. We're here to get people to have a conversation about this So you emergency. don't care that you're really winding a lot of people up? You don't care about I don't, that? No, I don't want to wind people up, and I do apologise for the inconvenience caused. Mm. But you can hear the emotion in my voice, right? I have two boys, 10 and 13, and they won't have enough food to eat in a few years' time. Do you understand that? So next he goes on to discuss Greta Thunberg and compares her veneration to Joan of Arc, who wasn't pagan but i guess that's not important also can we quit with the word paganist like you can just say pagan like it's pagan religion not paganist religion why do people do that um i actually like don't disagree with the veneration complaint i'm not a huge fan of cults of personality but i think that veneration of purity is more of a latent christianity thing not an inherently pagan thing and the example he's using is joan of arc like joan of arc the pagan hero of france i guess but I don't know. I, he included the Twitter post in his article. He seems proud of it. Uh, that being said, Thunberg being 16 doesn't change her actual arguments. She's making decent points. Some of them are emotional, but they're valid. And wanting a future for humanity is emotional, but I consider it agreeable. Um, you know, the thrust of her point, which is that people seem to care more about economic growth than habitability of the planet is an appropriate one. It should be considered and honestly applied. Here's the crazy part. Right now, we are ignoring them. We spend 1,000 times more on global fossil fuel subsidies than on natural-based solutions. And she's putting forward solutions, man. Like, I, I put a link below that I found while researching Gail Bradbrook, where Thunberg says that we should be putting more funding towards planting trees than we do currently. I appropriate more of our funding towards preserving the forests and wildlife that we have rather than destroying them. 
She also stresses that we should move away from fossil fuels. I don't care if this is coming from a 16-year-old girl, dude. Like, this is reasonable shit. And she goes about it uh, by using her name, which has pull to platform scientists, which is exactly the right way to go about this kind of conversation. Is there something wrong here? Like, what is, what's the problem? I am submitting this report as my testimony because I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the scientists. And I want you to unite behind the science. And then I want you to take real action. So Dude Buddy from the Federalist decides to go on to discuss what conservatives actually believe, which is interesting because he confesses that conservatives believe that climate change is happening, but are skeptical of the rate and they want cost-benefit analysis of solutions. And I know some conservatives like that, but like as a generalized statement about Americans, which is who Greta Thunberg is speaking to lately, that would just be incorrect. And I, I, like, I think if this were true, we would see like Republicans putting forward incremental solutions that Democrats would find agreeable. Um, I found this graph from uh, Pew Research that seems to show otherwise, but it's from 2016. So let you know, let's be charitable. Maybe there's been a renaissance among conservatives on this issue during the Trump administration. So to investigate this, uh, I decided to look at statements from the Republican co-chair of the Climate Solutions Caucus in the House of Representatives, a guy named Francis Rooney of the 19th District of Florida, who happens to be a former CEO of an investment firm and is personally worth about $22 million. In September of 2019, which is fairly recent, uh, he penned an op-ed pleading with his fellow Republicans to recognize the cost and dangers associated with changing climate remarking that scientific data empirically substantiates these concerns. And he says, pointedly, I am a conservative Republican, and I believe that climate change is real. And it's time for my fellow Republicans in Congress to stop treating this environmental threat like something that is abstract and political and recognize that it is already affecting their constituents and their daily lives. Odd that he would write such a thing when conservatives are so very much on the same page when it comes to the reality of climate change. Our good friend of the Federalist must think that Francis Rooney, a long-standing Republican that has served under the Bush administration, is engaging with a leftist straw man of conservatives. Obviously, he is completely ignorant on what conservatives in America generally hold. <laughs> Link to the op-ed is below. The remainder of the article is just like political posturing and more bad research. He talks about how 20th century Marxists conquered nature and how China burns more coal than the rest of humanity combined and talks about how Stalin would throw twerkers into the gulags. The guy hates twerking for some, I don't know what's going on. But there's a letter that he claims is from 500 scientists sent to the UN that asks to open the debate on climate change, which he claims the media completely ignored. There's a problem with that, though. The media didn't ignore it. And I'll link below to an article from The Guardian, which, <laughs> take that as you will. Uh, but it details how members of the group called Clintel, this is the group that sent the letter, they have, like, overt connections to mining and oil corporations. Just just a little research into uh, Goose Burkhout, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the founder of Clintel, who started his career working for Shell shows that he's the founder of another company called Delphi Consortium, which does seismic research for oil and gas companies. No bias there, I guess. I don't know. But our author wants to take this letter and hold it as the gospel truth, which to me just reeks of confirmation bias. He's just agreeing with the letter because he wants to. And this just seems to be one more thing that he cited in this article in a long line of things. He just didn't research at all. And honestly, the existence of this letter just like hammers home the point that Greta Thunberg is making, which is that people care more about economic growth than about the habitability of the planet. Like, that's where we're at. Our little friend, uh, he continues, though. Like, don't worry, he's got more to say. He laments that like the loss of Judeo-Christian faith has resulted in attraction to pre-civilized practices, which is a mess that might dictate its own video. But he associates this with like overt sexuality and breaking down familial ties, which is weird considering pagans value family and partake in ancestor veneration. And I think that like, honestly, part of his problem might be that any healthy attitude towards sex is going to look over the top when you're used to like the repressed sexuality practices of Christianity. Something that's really interesting to me is that he's trying to wrap all of these distinct things together and create a monolith. Like, find a number of things that he thinks are kooky and wrap it all together and paint it as, like, a bunch of people that are on the same page. Which is a strategy of some people on the far right. Like, Sargon does this with feminism. Fuentes does this with GRSM movements. And then there's this guy trying to equate environmentalism with what he thinks are, like, crazy pagans. The funny thing is, is that, like, much of the things that he's actually pointed out are Christian problems. His issue with purity as applied towards Greta Thunberg is, he compares to Joan of Arc, which is a Christian legend. 
The seminary in question is mainly run by Christians. Even apocalyptic spirituality is overwhelmingly Christian. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, the Left Behind series, Seventh-day Adventists, Jim Jones, and any Christians obsessed with the rapture, RFID chips as the mark of the beast, or the white throne judgment. Like, these are Christian things, not pagan things. And even, even polytheists with apocalypse narratives. Heathens famously have Ragnarok. Like, we don't see it the same way as Christians do. Like, we don't do this, like, prophecy, the world is ending shit. Like, we just, it's not our thing. Many of us, like myself, don't even put much stock in it, as it's likely a Christian-influenced thing anyway. If anything, apocalypse spirituality in our culture is just influenced by Protestant Christianity. And furthermore, his complaints about, like, the left taking climate change rhetoric as gospel falls apart and it applies more so to him when even taking a brief look at the motives behind his own sources. And most hilariously, conservatives disagree with him about conservatives. This article was ridiculous. And, like, further investigation in any and all of his points revealed that they backfire. And a little research, he could have, like, been more informed, but then he wouldn't have been able to make a clickbait article. And I couldn't have made this video, so hats off to the fool. That being said, I'm Ocean Keltoy. Hail to the patrons for making this content possible. And remember, especially with climate change, to find a way or make one. Please demonstrate, lobby, campaign. Just don't break the law. Read your history books, babe, though, about what works. Because if you've got a better plan about what I should do, I'm with your brother. We'll talk about it in the green room.